Well, I mean, the thing is, with this question, it's it's an underrated platform everybody gathered here today because no one ever gives the PSP, the PS Vita, their due. So if it's a specific game, then I'll drill down on Metal Gear Asset, I'll drill down on Pursuit Force, I'll drill down on Uncharted Golden Abyss, one of the best Uncharted's that about three people played and two of them worked at Naughty Dog, but the PSP <laughs> and the Vita um, are brilliant little systems. And I know Rich has got a PSP, but I don't know a single other human who's got a Vita, not a single one. And so my thing would be, I want to shout out that platform because I feel like Sony completely mismarketed it back at the time and they sort of just said hey look it's a mini portable like full PlayStation and not like the idea that it can have cool little games that only work but the benefit from being portable which is obviously what the Switch got in on and it's just when the Switch took off it's brilliant love the Switch and everything but I was kind of looking at the Vita going you, you could have had that you could have had it that was an open goal and you could have done it you're a portable PS1 machine you're a beautiful little thing and it just didn't do it so I would drill down to Pursuit Force because that game um, is like this sort of it's did you guys play Vin Diesel's The Wheel Man? Oh, no, no Why not? I've heard of it. But. <laughs> so Vin Diesel's The Wheel Man, it, it has to be referred to in its full name, um, had this uh, mechanic called carjacking where you could jump from car to car. It was in Jack 2 Renegade as well. Um, and then Pursuit Force was like, what if we made a whole game about that where you're just jumping between cars, shooting in slow motion so you can shoot the dudes that you're about to land on. And then you, you know, take over that Jeep or that bike or whatever. And then you go and you do some horrible third person shooting. But in between that, you do a lot of car jump and stuff and it was brilliant. And so, Pursuit Force, lads. <laughs> it does sound good. Is that what? So is that different from the mechanic in um, Driver San Francisco where you can sort of mind meld into other cars? Is this like Yeah, yeah that, that one's more, the, that mind meld thing is more like what Battlefield did, that Battlefield yeah. 2 thing where yeah. you like zip across the battlefield. No, I mean, it's like you're literally jumping from car to car. Like you get on the, it's like, like Uncharted, like what Naughty Dog would do in Uncharted 2 and then what they did better in like 4 and Lost Legacy where it's like, I'm going to jump to this thing. But because it's the 2000s, what if you could kick it into slow motion when you jump? and you just sort of jumped and shot some dudes in midair and then you land and you t it, it, it's Sounds so good cool. lads i'm just saying i mean vin diesel's the wheel man's pretty good too but it's all solid so segueing from scott's love for the playstation portable i'm actually going to jump in with the psp game as well yes um and that is grip shift which was a title i picked up forever ago for you know probably absolutely nothing at a game store back in i don't know 2000 nine, ten, and um, basically take um, the, the sort of short, big, sort of action heavy driving of Trackmania and pair it with the whimsicality of like Super Monkey Ball and that's Grip Shift. And it was it was a it was a, a format that's been tried and tested because I, I love Trackmania and I played that to death anyway. And getting this on the PSP and I just adore it. It's honestly like the art style is really, it's, it's very, sort of early noughties like we're really cool like i always think of like looking at the character selection screen of like ssx tricky or something and everyone's like uh -huh. everyone's like super cool and hyper it rad me, and it you leads into that, that completely the sim spin off yeah and it's it's honestly honestly i absolutely love it like i'm sure there's gonna be footage of it right now because it's kind of hard to explain but it's a very familiar concept but i absolutely adored it on the psp and then it turned out there was a version on xbox live arcade as well and i was like well obviously you know if there's a there's a portable version which will be limited in some respect let's get the full console version and funnily enough the psp version is better than the console version because the psp one has got a full track editor and everything and the xbox one doesn't which is strange but grip shift for me i absolutely love and if you can Find it second hand, or you can get it on your Vita, Scott. I uh, <laughs> I highly recommend giving it a go. But if what I do have to jump, it? I've got to jump to Team Red very quickly. And uh, for the for the old DS, uh, Metroid Prime Hunters, which Ooh. for a first person shooter on the on the DS using a stylus to aim, actually, as someone who is a keyboard and mouse purist for first person shooters. I actually can very much get behind using a stylus. He hates the analog glasses. sticks. He likes aiming with the stylus. I like aiming with the stylus. I loved Metro Prime <laughs> Hunters. It really, a really early DS game showed you just what that system was capable of. And the game I really, really need for the Switch is a new Rhythm Paradise game. Oh, it's Rhythm been Paradise too long. was v genuinely my uh, my DS screen has got scratches along what would be horizontally <laughs> on the screen when you're holding it normally because of how much I played Rhythm Paradise in the vertical mode. So. Give me a new Rhythm Paradise game. Metro Prime Hunters was great, and everyone go play Grip Shift. Okay, so to segue from Rich's segue 
from Scott's PSP talk. I actually section. didn't like the PSP and I traded in my sisters to buy Arkham Asylum in 2009. So I saw the handheld game, Josh, go on. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of here, look, I'm kind of here as a rogue element because all of the handheld games I played were just like not great. So in my small selection, I have to have the best of a bad bunch and my most underrated handheld game is Spider-Man Mysterio's Menace for the Game Boy Advance. I, it was the only big handheld game, handheld um, machine, sorry, that I was properly invested in. Like I had some crash games for it. I played Planet of the Apes on it and I played Spider-Man Mysterio's Menace. Even had the little dorky light thing that went on the top so you didn't oh, get it. Okay. You didn't see it that the was dark. the future, that, mate. It was, it was back in the day, man. But <laughs> this game, like, is genuinely solid. Like it's a really good, <clears throat> Um, side scroller beat up thing where you obviously play as Spider Man and you fight against a bunch of the heroes. Rogues Gallery, I'm pretty sure, like the first mission is about um, Hammerhead. Obviously, the main villain is Mysterio and the menace he um, provides to New York City. But it was just, I always kept, went back to this in particular because it was genuinely proper hard. Like it was so difficult and I never completed it. So I have some unfinished business with it where I got to the last level multiple times and then just got wrecked. Like, like totally annihilated. There's one level where you're like going through this, you're fighting Electro and a bunch of the walls are electrified. So obviously you're Spider-Man crawling around and you just get knocked off and bounced off it over and over again. And it is piss hard. But also, I have a lot of love for it. Like, it was essentially my older brother growing up. Like, I'm the oldest of my siblings. So this game was the was the thing that, you know, gave me a ribbing. It, get, it like, elbowed me in the sides and was like, come on, guy, get good. Grow up a bit. That's that's my Spider-Man Mysterio's menace um, experience. And it was made even better because I could take it to parties and pretend I was really cool playing Spider-Man in the corner, reading Spider-Man comics before Spider-Man comics were deemed acceptable. I was Don't even introduce yourself. Just... Mind, right? <laughs> this is me. This is all I am. <laughs> yeah, this is me, the Game Boy Advance. Here we go. And then I never played any handhelds until the Switch after that, but that doesn't technically count because she can dock it, you know what I mean? Other than that, I just had my sister because she was the one who bought all the handhelds. She had like a PSP, DS and stuff. So I was just playing like Bratz the game and the game <laughs> where you have virtual dogs, which, you know, were pretty good. Mate, Nintendo Dogs was some good Nintendo stuff. Nintendo Dogs was good stuff. Is I'm not gonna lie, the, the alarms are going off around me because of the this lack of handheld play. Man's not played the Pokemon, but Josh you needs to get some of DS, man. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll go back because everyone like loves the DS, man. But like I said, my selection of games on all these consoles was so limited that I just, they did not leave a good impression, friends. I mean, I think <laughs> Liberty City Stories was as good as it got oh. apart from Spider-Man, but that's it. Liberty City well, Stories, though. Vice City Stories, Vic Vance, all the way. Yes. Chinatown Wars on the PSP. Beautiful. Yes. Going from Josh's segue, from Richard's segue to <laughs> Scott's segue, uh, and going back to the Game Boy Advance. Now, I never really grew up with Mario, oddly enough, because I just never had any of those games. But I did have Warrior Land 4, which was absolutely incredible, and I just I loved it so much. I just played it so much as a kid. And in the story, you your your warrior basically he's driving this car along this desert and then he finds this temple um and he just falls into it i can't remember exactly how he goes into it and stuff <laughs> but um there's four corners of the pyramid and you have to go through like a bunch of levels within inside that and then um once you complete the level from the stage you fight a boss and it's it's really cool. Every single stage inside that level has like different theming. It's totally different. Um, like the platforming is just excellent, really. Everything's about it's just so good. And um, it's weird because I've totally forgotten almost everything about it, about why it was so good. But it, I just trust me, it was good. Um, you can unlock music tracks. You could um, like find secrets of in there. Um, the music tracks as well were really bizarre. They had um, like just it was just crap music, and then there was this like really odd do you remember like the nintendo camera the um that you had for your game boy, game boy color yeah, yeah it's basically that but it was like switched between like sad and happy to two images it was so bizarre um <laughs> matrix camera. yeah and then the final boss was so cool it was like this um this like geisha i think it was and she had like different masks on and um she was like angry sad happy um and you had to defeat all of them and then just 
chuck a bomb at her or a pin, something like that. It, it, was, it was a long time ago, but honestly, every single level on that was so cool and every single boss stage was just amazing. Um, and also, I just wanted to shout out Chinatown Walls as well, like Rich mm. mentioned um, earlier on, because honestly, it's, it's, it's just brilliant. Like it's, it's genuinely one of the most underrated GTA games, I think. Um, like, you know, excluding all of the, uh, the 3D ones. But, um, but yeah, like the drug mechanics on that was so good as well. I found that really addicting, just buying buying crap here and then selling off like 300% higher over there. Or it, yeah, it had a cool little economy, like all the mini games. Yeah, oh my god, it's yeah. brilliant. I spent so much money on the scratch card as well. <laughs> <laughs>